Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to American Truck Simulator. I'm Martin Wenzel. It is Thursday, June 6th. We're in Montreal continuing the High Mar delivery job to Sept Isles, Quebec. Let's get going. I gotta turn the wipers off from last time. Where are we? Wipers, wipers. There we go. Ah, again, my steering wheel is not properly calibrated. All right, give me a second, fix that. All right, now we're set. Not sure why it's doing that, why it's, uh, the profiler, the profiler I use is Logitech Profiler isn't uh, starting up when I start up my computer now for some reason. I don't know how long I'm gonna like this uh, sun visor. Kind of makes everything claustrophobic. It's kind of interesting. I was watching a uh, Kenworth video comparing the Kenworth W900 and the Kenworth W990 and the guy was talking about how it just the, the front uh, windscreen windshield is just you have so much vision obviously the Peterbilt uh, I'm not sure if the five is the 579 the more modern kind of Peterbilt I, I think that also has the split windshield which is a little bit uh, difficult to use, but then then we have this then we put the sunscreen on here, and it's a <laughs> Real pain actually. I can't see the stoplights at all Have to jump out here Yeah, I can't see the stoplights at all you need those uh more road level lights This is what happens when you're behind a truck in a lot of places, especially here in China, they only have stoplights uh, on the opposite side of the intersection usually. Uh, they don't have the lower ones. Uh, same as here. So you get behind a big truck and you can't see. There's a little cat dump truck right there. So we're in Montreal. Uh, we got nine and a half hours to go on this delivery. So that will take up the rest of this day. All right, I'm gonna kind of hang back here. I wanna kind of keep that one light. Uh, no, I can't see it. So the first chance I get, I'm going to try to go to a Kenworth dealership to see if I can buy one of those W990s. I do want to get a Ken, uh, kind of an old style, big king of the road kind of Kenworth in the garage as well. And we have the T680, but I want to go back to that W900 or the W990, try that out. Uh, definitely feel king of the road in one of those guys. Look at that truck over there. He was, he had a big giant uh, ram bar and all that. 
I don't know if I missed it. I, I didn't see that as an accessory here on this truck. We can't get any, uh, like, the big ram bars or bull bars, which is really weird. So now we're going to start heading up uh, right along the St. Lawrence uh, Seaway, the St. Lawrence River, and all that. I think we're still right around, uh, I think it would be Lake Ontario, right around there. And then we'll get into just being along the St. Lawrence River. And we're going to take that all the way out. Uh, I think, what is it, Newfoundland Bay, Newfoundland, Newfoundland Bay. Whatever that is up there. I don't know my uh, east, eastern seaboard geography, and especially my Canadian geography. <laughs> but we'll see what it looks like. Right now it's just a lot of trees. I think this area really though is a, a lot of farmland right along uh, the St. Lawrence River. Let's try to get this truck under our control, not go sliding all over the road. Another beautiful sunrise. know what's going on here well, why are we just come on here let's go all right speed limit's still 62 these two guys have decided to block the road this is just ridiculous come on I don't know what they're doing coming down that coming down across that bridge they just slam the brakes and then not really moving this best buy truck is really being stupid i uh, can't really blame it on the guy in the right lane uh, that guy in the right lane if he's got a truck passing him, uh, it's a good idea for you to just let off a little bit. Let that guy get by and get in front of you. Uh, but this Best Buy truck has decided, no, nah, I'm going to stick in the left lane, block up the whole road. This is frustrating. Come on, move over. There you go.
And now this guy's gonna uh, pick up the pace here. What is going on here? <laughs> uh, but this is that. that I mean, it ha obviously happens in America a lot, but it happens over here in China a ton, where you'll get trucks just hanging out in the left lane. Um, the way the road works, a lot of, like, um, obviously down the freeways, uh, they'll do that, and they'll, it's just a, it's just stupid and very dangerous, because you get three wide trucks, and it's just, come on, get past each other. And then, and I, I need to get past this guy, so I'm going to get past this guy so I can get over to the right lane so I'm not blocking everything up. Well, especially on our surface highways over here, uh, the road that runs right in front of uh, where I live, anytime there's a left turn lane, you know, the road will be two lanes like it is here, for example. And usually there's a you know, planters or boulevard or fences in the middle of the road separating the two directions. Let's see if we have to go to this way station. Nope, you can bypass it. But you'll have the two lanes and then whenever it gets near a, a set of traffic lights, the left lane will become a left turn lane only. But probably 100 to 200, more closer to the 100, 100, probably 100 yards, well not 100 yards at all, 100 meters, maybe 100 feet, probably 100 feet, maybe 200 feet from the intersection itself, uh, then a, a right lane, a new right lane will open up. Now the idea is here we got some water right along. Uh, probably going to want to say it's the St. Lawrence River at this point. We're starting to get close to it. That's really good that they modeled it. That's nice. I'm assuming if we uh, were to take this interchange, this exit, that would take us down into... Uh, well, that would actually just go into another part of Canada. <laughs> water right up to the freeway. But the idea is that it has that extra right lane because the left lane turns into a left turn only. So you can, so the two lanes traveling down the road, what it should do is those two lanes should be shifting over to the right and then shifting back after the interchange into their proper, into the two lanes again. It's a very poor design for a road. You shouldn't do it. That's why usually the left turn lane in America is an extra lane jutting off, not the other way around. But the lines on the road, the white dashed lines on the road, are drawn sh continuing straight. So if you stay in your left lane and you don't realize that turns into a left turn lane, and the signs for that are right up against the intersection, so you don't know. There's no warning ahead if it's a left turn only or a left turn and straight, which sometimes happens. And then you're stuck over there because no one's going to let you move over because the people in the right lane, they continue to drive straight and they don't move over into the far right lane, the new right lane that opens up. And they just continue straight on, the trucks especially. They will drive straight. You're in that left lane and it turns into a left turn only, you're stuck over there. You have to hit the brakes and stop and beg to move over. And no one's going to because people do not move over to the right, the far right lane and follow where the straight lanes are actually going because the lines are not designed. Uh, the, the white dashed lines, they don't have guidelines. It's a big thing on the Chinese driving test. Oh, what are these dashed lines through an intersection? Well, they're guidelines. They don't have them anywhere, though. And they're usually inaccurate when they do. If you There's one left turn uh, near here where if you follow the guidelines, you will drive off. You will If you follow the guidelines and don't use your eyes, you just follow the guidelines, it will drive you into the, into the sidewall. Because... It, 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 I don't know what the guideline's for. It's in between the two lane, two left turn lanes, but then it switches to halfway through the intersection. The guideline now starts following where you'd be turning if you were in the far right lane, in the right lane. But if you're in that right lane to start with, that guideline's on your left, and so you're using it as the guide to stay in your lane, and the left car, the left lane, they can turn at the same time. But then suddenly it switches what that guideline's guiding everyone on. And so, it's 
pretty, pretty stupid. And here we are. I think this is now, I think it's one Highway 138, probably at this point. Uh, probably Quebec Provincial Highway. Um, definitely going to have to figure out the different highways because I downloaded a lot of the um, highway shields and stuff uh, for Saskatchewan and Ontario, Manitoba, and Quebec. And it's kind of interesting because, again, America, you have the interstate system. You have the U.S. Highway Shields. Then you have the state highways and county highways. And typically here on our, as as we're driving, we have there aren't a ton of county highways shown, uh, displayed in or modeled in America Truck Simulator. It tends to be your U.S. highways, uh, your more major, your interstates, your U.S. and your state highways. And I'm assuming it's the same here in Canada, where there's. But I can't figure out the hierarchy because I've seen uh, the Trans Canada, and maybe the Trans Canada Highway is those ones are the interstate equivalent, and then there's. But then the next level down, you're already into every province seems to have a different uh, sign for it, and then we're further down another level to here to 138. So I don't I don't know what the different. Uh, highways are at this point but you'll have it nice and neat in the lower right hand corner and once I figure that out it's some episode I could mention those I probably should have figured that out before this episode so I could let you know what kind of highway it specifically is but we are on a highway 138 and I want to say it's probably a state level highway driving four hours almost four and a half hours so next next uh, truck stop we come across we'll pull in and probably grab a late breakfast early lunch kind of a brunch situation probably we're really good on time uh, we don't have to worry about the 14 stopping us and our drive clock is really good. Alright, here we'll take our break. And on the other side of the break, I'll explain what's going on on our map down there. In the nav screen. 
Yeah, while we're at it, let's let's see what the fuel prices are like here. We're gonna have to get fuel at some point before we get back to America. Five dollars. All right, how much? Eight hundred sixteen miles. Well, I don't think I want to get fuel here. <laughs> we'll see. I. Yeah, we'll see how it is further on down the road. I don't think we're gonna get out of Canada without having to pay that. And it goes to show you, we're spoiled in America. And it's always the thing here is that uh, gas is six RMB, six to se six or seven RMB between those two, uh, for I believe a liter of fuel unleaded here in China. Now, between a dollar is between six or seven RMB. And so that's like a dollar a liter. Now I'm not sure what, I think it's four. Is it four liters to a gallon? So you're paying $4 for a gallon of gas in China and that's the normal in America that people would be riding in the streets. All right, well, let's take our break. I'll see you around 10 o'clock. Alright, let's get going. We have 815 miles still in the in the tank for fuel. Uh, I don't know if that's going to get us back to the land of a little bit less expensive diesel. But we will see. Let's get out of here. Now you can see the map down there on the nav screen. Uh, now the map, uh, the nav screen doesn't show us water, but between the two roads, so we're on the left hand side, going up, and that is the west side of the St. Lawrence Seaway, and then that other highway, uh, Riviera Du, and then all that, that is on the east side of the St. Lawrence Seaway, on the east and the southeast side. So there's a big body of water between us. That's what's going on there. And that's why there are no roads connecting between us and the other guy. Okay, what's this guy doing? I never had that happen before with another truck. I actually pull up. It's pretty cool. I believe that's uh, Kenworth W900. Day cab. I'll let him go so so I can get some eyes on what's going on on our to our right. It looks clear. I'm really jealous of those tricked out trucks right there. You keep seeing them come down the road from Jazzy Cat, I'm assuming. And I, I have yet to be able to figure out how to really trick out my truck to that level. I know I can add the bull bars on some trucks. I, I, I don't seem to have that option on this truck, which is very strange. Uh, all the lighting. I got a Volvo. So update on Naomi in the in the Kenworth. Uh, she's been making a steady uh, steady daily profit. Um, every day, usually bringing in about I want to say about four hundred dollars a day. So not bad at all for a hired worker. Never mind. I kind of wanted to pass there. But the cars start spawning in and not gonna make it. Now our, right now, it's only been a, a, what, two or three days? Really, this is the third or fourth day now with her driving. 
Uh, the daily profit and everything for the whole company is in the red. Again, that is because of that first job. I showed you that the first job she does, the first job any hired worker does, I don't know if this happens with the vanilla economy, but it happens with uh, Colossus economy mod, is that that first job, they're going to lose four to five thousand dollars. And so now you're in the hole, your profit, it doesn't look like you're making a profit every day. She it doesn't look like she's making money every day on her average, because her average is including that $4,000 loss right away. But on average, she's actually making, making the company about 400 to 500 extra dollars. And that money, that $500, that pays our loan. That pays our loan off nicely. So our loan is a $500 payment before when it was just us driving we had the $200 payment that $200 was coming out and that was not being replaced by anything now Naomi's over there making four five hundred dollars a day for us and everything we're making that's just pure profit now so money should be obviously money's gonna come in a little quicker and that that tends to happen. Um, I, again, I've never done classes. I don't know how many people do do companies with classes economy mod, but it's definitely more realistic levels. I put those in quotes because obviously uh, it doesn't include all the expenditures and it also doesn't include all the income. You'd actually, you'd probably be getting a little bit higher income as the company. And she'd be getting paid per mile. I don't think she's actually getting paid per mile, which is, I think, a little bit of a flaw in Colossus' system. But probably he had to do that so that the drivers can make any money because the game is not set up with a real economy. It's set up with a very simple economy to run. And people tend to complain about that. It's always strange when I see the people uh, putting up the download uh, for... You know, the mod where you get all the experience and all the money from day one. It's like, alright. It's not, it doesn't take that long if you're playing vanilla to make enough money to buy a bunch of trucks. <laughs> I think, I think the first time I uh, popped American Truck Simulator in, obviously did the vanilla economy. I don't even think Colossus Economy Mod was out yet, but I definitely didn't uh, see it anywhere. I didn't have that. And it only took probably, I think I the, the wait was you had to wait until a certain level to buy your first truck. It wasn't the money holding you back. It was the, it was rather the level. You need a certain level to be able to buy a truck. Now with a classic economy mod, well, you don't have the money. So usually you're able to get your experience level up to the point where you can almost, by the time you can afford anything, Unless you take out an early loan, you're you've got the experience level that you can buy any truck, and now it's just about the money. But never, I did hire some workers on that one, but I've never done it with classes economy mods, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think it should be successful. It's you know it's not going to make us bazillionaires. That truck looked like he was going to take off and just blow the red light. We're here in Bay... Well, I'm not, I'm just going to butcher the name. It's a French... French-Canadian name. Really cool cab over right there. Uh, not exactly sure what that is. I know we've we I think we drove a similar truck. I don't think that is the exact same one we've driven. But we drove it early on in this series. That was a fun time just driving through, uh, getting some different custom trucks like that with those cab overs. I remember the Freightliner vividly. That thing had that grill on the front of the windshield. <laughs>
So I think we just got... I think we just got the money from Naomi's recent job, I didn't notice. Whoa, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I think we got the money from her recent job, so we went from... I think she made about $600 there, maybe, it looks like. 500 something. Went from just under 300,000 to right back over to 300,000. So I was hesitant to buy a lot of uh, a lot of toys for this truck. Wanted to make sure that we could still afford to buy a proper third truck and possibly a trailer. Uh, so we can hire a third driver and so we can get a look at uh, my plan is to get the W990 uh, that's gonna be a that obviously a modded truck and who knows if that will still work after 1.35 officially drops but that is the plan Got this little lone raindrop up in the left corner there. Oh, there we got some more. And you can see that's the St. Lawrence Sea where we're emptying out into the Atlantic now. Getting very close to that area. cargo ship right there that wasn't there for just popped out and popped out of thin air Alright, here's the end of the line for the highway so far. And it's Sept Isles. Sept Isles? Sept Isles? Usually it's me uh, passing someone on the, on the passing someone coming up on a car into their tra lane. That guy, it's like, come on, you're right here in the city. You're gonna pass right there. Now this city is again obviously a cookie cutter. Looks like it's maybe Carson City, something jackpot, some Nevada city for sure. Something on the US 93. 
And as I mentioned a few previous episodes, uh, it'll be fun to see ProMods, what ProMods going to bring to Canada with ProMods Canada. Oh, see, here's the sucky part. Can't see the light. Yeah, actually, we were able to see the light up to here, but if the light changed at any point here, we wouldn't have known it. So while I like the outside look of this uh, sun visor, I'm not sure it's practical for us on the inside. Try to restart the truck in the wrong gear. Try to I don't know where I'm going to be able to back this up. I'm going to tell you, these jobs, the last two jobs have been just nightmares for parking. And I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to back in from the road, which is going to be a pain in and of itself. Alright, honestly, I don't... I can't really see where... how I would be able to get this in. There's not enough room to really back up in that spot and... do like a Y-turn thing. There's just no room in here to do anything. Uh, I think the only way you could possibly get this load in to where they want it parked is you'd have to go all the way out there. You would have had to what we would have to do is we would have to turn at that intersection, turn left, and then back it in all the way in. I think that's the only way. I think that's the way you would have to do it. Uh, but now I'm in here, and I can't e even just to back it out is going to be a hassle. So we're just going to drop it here, and we'll let the yard dogs deal with it. <laughs> oh, the joys of a simulator. Oh, whoops. I didn't want to do that. That would be if I was in the parking spot itself, so now I have to actually rehook here. Oof. Don't hit T, we gotta hit enter. Alright. Well, we weren't successful parking it, but we did deliver it, and I think we're gonna jump to level 28 instructor, so now I can instruct people how not to park. $3,677, that all goes into our pocket because 
We don't have to worry about that loan payment. Loan payment's getting uh, taken care of by Naomi and uh, her jobs. So let's pick another skill. Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's do another long distance. Uh, we'll max out this long distance and fragile, and then we'll start doing the just in time deliveries. All right, so we can take a quick look. Let's look at what Naomi's doing, just to show you what's going on. So now our profit, our average profit, was a negative because the only it was only going off of uh, basically Naomi in the last seven days. Her thing wiped out everything we had done. And we finally actually finished the job. It's been three or four days since we last uh, made some income. So our profit's actually right where we want it. You see her average profit is a negative almost a dollar. She's losing almost a dollar a day on average. But that's because if you look at her log, a little hiccups there. Look at her log, she's making, like that first day she lost $4,000. But then, Day 260, she made what about 400, almost 450 dollars. Uh, yesterday, yesterday made in profit. Uh, that's gonna be 800, yeah, 800 dollars. And then today, again, almost 800 dollars in that kind of ballpark, around 700, 800 dollars. So she's making a really tidy profit for us. Uh, again. This isn't, I, I wish this would actually be paying her out, uh, giving her, you know, 40 cents a mile. But it is what it is. Uh, let's get back out and get the truck parked. Hey, look at that. It's like magic. It moved it where they wanted it. Well, now they're all happy. find a place to park. There's a garage over there. We can't park at the garage though. You can only park at garages you own. Uh, looks like there's a repair shop. Actually, what we might do at the repair shop is swap out this sun visor. Simply because I can't see anything with it on. <laughs> now I'm getting the hiccups. Well, we drove all the way up to Sept Isles. Uh, uh, Sept Isles, a uh, pretty good job of whoever does the Canadian Dream map of representing the water, the ocean side, I and mean, we're pretty much right up there. We're starting to see the Atlantic, not just the river, not just the seaway, but. Pretty good journey through Canada. Um, I'll see if I'll do the next episode, will be just tomorrow or not. I kind of want to get back into, well, I mean, even if we go to the northeast, I jump to the northeast, it's going to be kind of, oh, yep, too far, too far. But even if we get into the northeast of coast to coast, it's going to look very similar, if not more barren, than what we saw up here in Canada. Um, I don't think uh, coast to coast has done a lot of uh, detailed work up in the northeast yet. Unlike the south, the southeast, which is pretty good looking. 
Next to us, we got a day cab of uh, 389 with those quote unquote alien headlights. I think we have more of the throwbacks. Two good looking trucks, though. All right, let's look at the log. Uh, started the day at 2 a.m. Mountain Time for four out here in Eastern Time. I uh, drove for nine hours, 15 minutes. Actually, I uh, did the wrong, math wrong there. Uh, nine hours, nine and a half hours of driving and then another half hour of duty time. Uh, I'm gonna have to change the numbers here because it, even though it says we're at around 2.15 here, we should have added probably 15 minutes uh, parking that truck and unloading at our delivery point. So nine, nine and a half hours driving and then another half hour of on duty time. So 10 hours duty time today, good day. And let's see how many, how many miles did we drive? Check the truck. We drove 457 miles today. All right. Until next time. Not sure where we'll be next time. We might be right here in Sub Dials. Might be somewhere else, depending on what it is. Uh, but until then, please like the video, comment below, share it, and subscribe to the channel. Happy trucking. Take care. Goodbye.